Today we're going to visit with Fisheries Development Supervisor Bob Frelick. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Bob, your crews are busy at this time of year. What are they doing? Well, Mike, we're, uh, you know, this time of the year, we're kind of gearing up for, for spring. We're uh, starting to haul docks around and, and uh, you know, we're charged with, uh, you know, providing boating and fishing opportunities uh, around the state at, the, at all the 400 and some fishing lakes. So, so we're, we're just trying to make sure that everything's open and usable. Okay, you oversee the boat ramps on most of these lakes and rivers around the state. Water levels are down. How are things looking? You know, we've got a few issues in, on a few lakes around the state, Mike, but um, overall, I'd say things are, are pretty good. Um, you know, we went into this, uh, you know, with in fairly good shape. A lot of our lakes were full uh, back in 2019. Um, you know, we had a fairly normal year in that fall. We were pretty wet. Um, last year at this time, the, the National Weather Service reported that 95% of the state was experiencing no no drought conditions at all and now you fast forward to right now and they're they're reporting that 85 percent of the state is experiencing it so so like we all know things can change in a hurry around here and and uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see what happens a lot of fishing activity going on on the missouri river right now how are the ramps on the river uh the the ramps on the river uh from the garrison stretch down to oahe here in the bismarck area are, are always pretty popular and things are, are pretty good right now um, you know, further upriver at by Williston up there from to the Montana border, not so good. Uh, two out of the three ramps up there are, are unusable. Bob, uh, lake levels on Lake Sakakawea have been pretty good. Uh, we've had low ramps there before. How are things looking so far this year? The majority of that water, you know, that comes through the Missouri River system comes out of the mountains in Montana. And as of right now, that snowpack is is right at average, you know, right at around 90 to 100 percent. So uh, the current models and forecasts are for Sakakawea levels to, you know, maybe come up two to two to six feet this summer. Uh, Milwaukee, not quite so much. Uh, they're going to probably stay where they're at and maybe drop a little bit. But even despite those rises or falls, um, you know, we're going to still have decent access on both those reservoirs. Okay, let's move over to the northeast part of the state, Devil's Lake. Devil's Lake is kind of in the same situation. Um, Despite the drought and the, and the lack of precipitation, that lake is only down a half a foot from what it is or what it was last year at this time. Um, it's not unrealistic, I guess, to, to think that it's probably going to drop another two to three feet if we don't get any moisture this summer. But even with that, we, we'll still be in pretty good shape. Okay, and like you said earlier, we manage over 400 lakes. Not every lake has a boat ramp. But how are district lakes going to look uh, with water levels? Yep, district lakes are. It's going to depend and vary a little bit on the state. The eastern part's probably going to, you know, fare a little bit better. The the west and the southwest is typically a little bit drier. But uh, again, we're we're only in the first year of of this drought cycle, so you know we, we should be all right this summer. I don't really anticipate any major problems. But if things persist, you know, going into 2022 could be a totally different story. Bob, every year you guys put a few ramps at district lakes around the state. Any projects this year? We do. We've got uh, four or five new projects planned this year. Um, three of those, I think, are on the Missouri River system, and then we've got a couple on, on district lakes. But you know, that's kind of average, you know, anywhere from three to a half a dozen uh, new projects. And What's it take to put a new ramp in? Well, once, once a fishery is developed and, and the demand is there from the public to develop a ramp, you know, we look for a suitable site. And uh, we, de we define a suitable site as, as one that has both uh, good depth and slope, you know, both above the waterline and below the waterline, and then has a willing landowner that's going to give us, give us an easement. And so once we've identified that and secured an easement, uh, you know, we have to do some permitting and, and get some approvals for the project and, and make sure the monies are in place through the budgeting process. And, once that's all done, you know, then we can uh, start looking for contractors, bidding things out, and, and start the actual construction. Bob, you guys have a lot of wildlife clubs and parks and recs that you guys partner with throughout the year as well. We do, you know, and, and most of our projects, you know, just wouldn't be possible without those, without those local entities and partners. You know, we're, we've got a small group um, at the agency that works on it, but, you know, we're covering a lot of ground, a lot of lakes, and and we rely heavily on those local partners to, to work with us to build the project, but then even more importantly, to maintain it once it's done, you know, to put the docks in, take the docks out, 
clean the toilets, take care of the fish cleaning stations and stuff. And, and without them, you know, we just, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. What's well, speaking of fish cleaning stations, uh, you guys put any new fish cleaning stations in or what, what do you, what's the update on that? You know, fish cleaning stations are, are kind of static, I guess. Um, they're really expensive to build and they're really expensive to maintain. So, you know, we, we critique them and, and we're pretty strategic about where we put them. Uh, we built one new one last year, um, a four seasons, all seasons station up at Garrison, and we're building another one out at uh, Little Missouri Arm on Sakakawea this year. But, you know, those are the first two new stations in a while. Kind of the exciting news with fish cleaning stations is, is that, you know, we're upgrading uh, to a different style grinder. We're going from the old rotary type that you would have maybe in your kitchen sink type to a new uh, horizontal uh, grinder, uh, uh, different company, different vendor, and, and those seem to to be a lot uh, sturdier, uh, they, they do a better job, they're quieter, and, and the, the best thing of all is we have less problems with them. So, so we're kind of transitioning from the old ones to the new ones. So overall, anglers should have access to most water bodies. Yep, this summer I, I really don't see a whole lot of problems, Mike. Um, again, you know, if this drought continues and, and as it lingers into the fall, um, you know, things could get worse, but uh, for the immediate, you know, upcoming months, uh, anglers shouldn't have any problems at all. A lot of great information, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.